everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to answer a question that is asked very, very often, and that is, do I need to burnish? And if you don't know what burnishing is, it is the very last step in the coloring process or colored pencil process where you come back and you bring all of your colors together, get a really good blend, creating a very smooth look and getting rid of all of the white in the paper. Now, if you've watched my tutorials, you have probably seen that in some cases I do do the burnishing process and in others I don't. So I have three coloring books here and I also have some other coloring pages. And so in the first part of the video, I'm gonna go through some different examples and I'm gonna share with you which instances you would burnish your colors together and which instances you probably wouldn't want to burnish your colors together. Then in the second half of the video, I'm going to share three different ways with you that you can do that last and final step and burnish your colors together. Now I do want to say I am sick, so if my voice sounds a little bit scratchy, that is why. <laughs> If you check the description box down below, you will find links down there for my Facebook group, my Etsy shop, and my Patreon if you would like to support me there. I also now have channel membership. If you would like to find more information out about that, you can just click the join button down below the video. So let's first talk about some instances where you would not do that last and final process of burnishing your colors together on your coloring pages. So this book is Forest Girls Coloring, but this is an absolutely beautiful coloring book. Book, and it does have very thick thick paper and the paper is pretty textured it has quite a bit of tooth and so that gives you the ability to be able to really layer your colors and create that look of texture now when you're trying to create that look of texture on your coloring pages you don't want to come back and burnish all of those colors together for instance you can see, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there is a lot of the white of the paper still left here, and I wanted to use that for my benefit to create that look of texture. I also used three different colors that had a pretty big difference in value, and so by putting those colors together and creating the difference in the values of the colors and using them in the way that I did use them without coming back and burnishing them, but just coming back and doing a bunch of strokes and creating all of that look of texture in between with my lightest or my highlight color, I was able to create that look of texture. But you can see over here on the tabletop, I did burnish this out just a little bit more because I wanted this to look a little bit smoother. So I did use three different colors that had a pretty big difference in the values of the colors, but I brought in another color because I wanted to create a contrast between the top of the cabinets and then the fronts of the drawers. But there is a tutorial on the table, and I'll try to link that one in the upper right hand corner. I'm not going to be able to link absolutely everything because YouTube will only allow me to link five different videos. So I'm gonna try to link as many as I can. If there's something that you're interested in, please let me know in the comments below and I will provide you with the link if you can't find it. But this is definitely one instance where I would not come back and burnish all my colors together. I don't want all the colors to come together in a way where I lose the look of that texture. So now I have Romantic Country by Erie. And this is the next page I wanted to share with you. There is also a tutorial on this one. On this one, I also used a fine liner, not just the colored pencils but I did do the same stroking motion when I created the grass on this page. And then I came back with a fine liner and I came in and I created more strokes just to really make them stand out a whole lot more and to be able to create that realistic look of the grass. Had I came back and I burnished all of this out even before I laid the fine liner, it would have just all blended in and I would have lost that look of the realistic grass. So anytime you're doing any kind of strokes or lines or anything like that and you're trying to create some kind of texture, you are not going to want to come back and burnish your colors together. On this bunny rabbit on the fur, this was not burnished either because when you're doing fur, you're going to do a lot of strokes and you don't want all of those strokes to come together because you want the fur to look realistic. And the same goes down here for this grass. I did this with Derwent Inktense and I was still able to create 
texture with the grass and make it look more realistic. You could see all the different strokes. And like I said, you do that by just using quite a few different colors. If you look closely at this, you can see some lighter greens and some darker greens and even some browns. But because of the differences in the colors and the stroking motion that I use, they look much more realistic. And had I come back and burnished them out, they would have all just gone into each other and it wouldn't look the way that it does. And I'm pretty positive that these were done with Derwent Ink Tents. A lot of this page was done with Derwent Ink Tents. I believe the background was Neo Colors, but the fur was definitely Prismacolors. But there is a whole color along on my channel for this bunny. This is out of the Rachel Mintz Friendship book, which is an adorable little book. But there is a full color along on my channel, and I will try to link that up in the upper right-hand corner. There is even a background tutorial on there how to create these clouds and I'm pretty sure it was done with Neo Colors. Now here's another instance where I would not burnish and that is when I am coloring hair or I am trying to create a look like I did on this tree bark where I want it to look very realistic and I want it to look like it has quite a bit of texture. So again, when you're trying to create texture, you are not gonna wanna come back and burnish all those colors together. The leaves up here, they were burnished. Now there's no tutorial on this page because I did this page when I first got my whole vines and I just wanted to do nothing but color because I just love those pencils so much. <laughs> but the leaves on this page are all burnished. The hair is definitely not. This cute little lizard here, all of these colors were burnished. The clothing, I wanted it to look like there was just a little bit of texture, so I did not burnish the clothing. In some cases with clothing, I will burnish, and in other cases, I will not. Now, as far as the skin goes, the skin is definitely always burnished. You always want to come back on skin, and you want to lay down that final layer, and you want all those colors to come together as one. You want skin to look very, very smooth. Now there's no tutorial for this specific one, but there is a tutorial for this one. So you could see exactly how I do hair, and you could see exactly how I do the skin. There is a full color along on this page. This is from Mariola Budek's Etsy shop, but I just absolutely love this page. This is one of my absolute favorite things I've ever colored. But you can see on the hair that there are a lot of strokes here on the hair, and so had I come back and burnished all of those colors out, I would have lost all the look of all of those strokes, making her hair look much less natural. Now we have eyebrows here as well, and when you're doing eyebrows, you don't wanna burnish, because again, that is a stroking motion. We've got some eyelashes. Again, that is a stroking motion, but her skin needs to have that overall very smooth look, and so you really want to get that blended out and do that very last and final step of burnishing. So here is another one that I colored, and again, for the skin, I used that final step of burnishing because I wanted it all to come together and look very, very smooth. The hair, I did not, because I want all of those strokes to be completely visible. The clothing, in this one, I wanted it to have a little bit of texture, so I did not come back and burnish. And then, of course, the fur, this was definitely not burnished because had I come back and burnished, of course, I would have lost all of those lines in the fur. And I was very particular on this one to make sure the fur was going in the right direction. You can see that I've got some strokes here in the center part of the bunny's body going this direction. And then I've got a few little pieces up here where I did a different stroking motion and went upward. And then here is my transition where I started going a little bit outward. And then over here in the front of the bunny, Bunny's body, I have a lot of strokes going downward, and I wanted this to look a lot whiter, so there's a lot more white. This is the Holbein Soft White, so I've got a lot of white right in here because I really wanted that to stand out. But if you look really closely at this, you can see that I've got strokes going all different directions. And when you're trying to create that look, you definitely don't want to come back and burnish over the top of it. Now here is another one where I did the clothing a little bit differently. Let me put these right next to one another. So if you look at these right next to each other, you can see that this clothing here looks much more smoothed out. I did a completely different technique on this one. I wanted all the white of her collar to really, really stand out. And so on her collar, I did create a little bit of texture where I've got those lines and wanted the ruffles to really stand out. But then here on this part of the clothing, I laid down all of the colors exactly where I wanted them. And then I came back as a final step and I went over all of it with my lightest color 
to bring all of the colors together. So hopefully this shows on video, but I can totally see when I'm looking at it that this is much smoother. And then this one here, the clothing does have quite a bit more texture and you can see quite a bit more of the lines. So this is the difference in what it looks like if you decide to burnish or don't decide to burnish. And for something like clothing, you can always do it both ways. Now I have World of Flowers and there are just tons of flowers in this book. I love this book so much. But there are a few other things in here, like these bugs here. I did all three of these bugs with different pencils, and these are all burnished using my lightest color because I did want these to look really smooth. You've probably seen these leaves in previous video tutorials, but for leaves, I always burnish as my last and final step just to bring all of the colors together. And sometimes even after I burnish, I'll come back with my lightest color and lay another layer right over the top. And I did that here with this leaf here. And I will try to link these tutorials in the upper right hand corner. I do have a whole entire playlist of coloring nothing but leaves. So if you go to the playlist section of my channel, you will be able to find that. I also have a whole playlist of coloring nothing but flowers. And here's another page I colored. You probably saw this in a previous video, but this is another instance where I would just burnish everything on the whole entire page. So anytime I'm doing anything like this, in a coloring book like Johanna Bassford's. I'm not spending my time trying to create a whole lot of texture or anything like that. It's more cutesy and whimsical, and I'm not trying to make things look realistic or anything like that. So most of the times in instances where you're trying to create something realistic, like fur or in a portrait where you're coloring hair, those are the times where you're not gonna burnish. And even where I showed you in the Forest Girl coloring book where you were coloring wood. Now, I will say though, in some of Johanna's books, she does have some things that you could create texture on, like maybe little vases or even like a wooden crate in some of her books. And in those instances, I would probably not burnish those together because I want the texture to show through. But on a page like this, that's just more whimsical and cutesy, I feel like it's really important to come back and just burnish those colors together. And I just really like when they look very, very smooth. And then I also love my stickles. So in some cases, or in a lot of cases in this book, you're gonna see that I always come back and add some glitter just to give the flower or whatever it is I'm coloring a little bit more depth and dimension. Now for this tutorial, if you've not seen this one, this one was a very popular one on my channel. This was a video on how to take an object that is flat and make it look much more 3D. And so for this flower, I did put a little bit of texture on it and I did come in and draw those lines but I also burnished it just a little bit in the end in certain places like in between the lines. So this one was done just a little bit different. If you've not seen that video, I'll link it in the upper right hand corner so you could check that out. In this next part of the video, I am going to share with you three different ways that I would burnish my colors together. I've got three boxes here that I have drawn in. I'm using the Spring Hill paper and I'm going to create a blend of colors. My colors that I'm using to do this is pumpkin orange, goldenrod, and then I have eggshell. So I'm gonna lay my colors down on here how I would lay them on a coloring book. And so I'm going to use my lightest color first. And so I'm just gonna lay a layer of this eggshell in here. Now I have my golden rod and I'm going to lay down some of this color and pull it into that eggshell. And I'm laying it on both sides. And now I'm gonna lay down my darkest color, which is the pumpkin orange. Okay, so that is my first layer of colors. And you're not gonna do the burnishing process until you get to the very end and you've got all your colors laid down exactly where you want them. So now I'm coming back in that order. I laid my lightest color down. Now I have my mid-tone and as I come into that lighter area, I'm going to lift up on the pencil just a little bit. And now I'm coming back with another layer of the pumpkin orange and I'm blending that right into my mid-tone and I'm gonna do that on both sides. Now can you see how there is still quite a bit of the white of the paper left? And that's because this paper is a very textured paper. It does have quite a bit of tooth and so it does take a few layers before you're gonna come back and do that final step of burnishing. So I'm laying another layer down of my mid-tone and another layer of my lightest color. I'm using a little bit more pressure down here because I'm trying to get the colors down on the paper because I would like to show you what happens when you do that last and final step. So to cover some of the white of the paper, I'm gonna come back and go the other direction 
and hopefully you can see how some of the white of the paper is getting covered a lot more because I'm going the other direction. And I'm going to do that down here as well. Now I'm coming back with my mid-tone and I'm going to do the same thing in the same direction up and down. And a lot of the white of the paper is starting to get covered. Let me put a little bit more of my lightest color here. There is still a little bit of white left here. Now the last and final step where you do burnish, the whole point of burnishing is to get rid of all of that white and just create a very smooth layer of your colors and create a very smooth transition between all of the colors. Now I've done a few videos like this where I show you how to lay the colors down, how to burnish them if you do want to burnish them, but I've not done one of these videos in a very, very long time and I decided for this one that I wanted to use the oranges because it is the fall season and I thought this was fitting. But I think those colors look really pretty together. If you have a binder where you keep your color combinations together, make sure that you write this one down in there. But for this first one, I wanted to lay all the colors down with you so that you can see exactly how I would lay the colors down before I came back in and burnish. When I do the next two, I'm going to lay the colors down and then I'm just gonna show you the other two ways that I would burnish the colors together. And then we're gonna see the difference in the way that each one of them looks, depending on which technique you decide to use. So for this first one, we're gonna go ahead and burnish these colors together and we're gonna use the white Prismacolor. I don't have much left to my white Prismacolor, but I've zoomed you in quite a bit. So I'm hoping you're able to watch this and see the colors really blend out and how smooth they get. But you're gonna notice when I use the white Prismacolor, the colors are going to change quite a bit. So when you are using the white or when you're burnishing at all, always start with the lightest color because you never wanna pull the darkest color into the lightest color. I always start with the lightest color. So I'm gonna come in here and start blending this out. And you could see already by using this process that if you're using the white Prismacolor because it is so waxy, it does lay a layer of white over these colors and so it does change the color quite a bit, but it is blending them out and really moving that wax around. See how it just created a really smooth transition between the colors? Now I'm gonna come down here and do the same thing on the bottom and pull that lighter color into the mid-tone and then pull the mid-tone into the darkest color. But look how it just smoothed all of those colors out, getting rid of all of the white of the paper. So there's our first one using white. So I'm gonna lay the colors down for these two exactly the same that I laid them down here and then I'm gonna show you the other ways that you can burnish your colors together. So I've laid all of those colors down and if you look closely, I did leave a little bit of white in the paper because I want you to see that in these two, you can still see a little bit of texture. Like I showed you in the examples in the coloring books where you could still see some of the white. When you come back and you do the final step, and you burnish those colors together, it is going to get rid of all of that and it's going to make it look extremely smooth like this one does. So the next way that you could burnish your colors together is by using a blender. Now there are a couple different blenders. I have the Prismacolor blender here and I also have my Caran d'Ache blender here, which I absolutely love. Now I'm thinking here, maybe we use the Caran d'Ache blender for half of this one and the Prismacolor blender for the other half. So those of you that don't have a blender yet and you're looking to purchase one, you can decide which one works better for you, this Caran d'Ache blender or the Prismacolor blender. Okay, so I'm gonna use the Caran d'Ache blender first and I'm gonna start at the halfway point here and I'm just going to go in a circular motion and try to blend these colors together and then I'm gonna go into the darker color. And you can see that it's getting rid of a lot of that white of the paper and smoothing those colors out. And even in the places where there was much more white, if you just go over it a little bit more, it should get rid of all of the white of the paper. And if you go in a circular motion, that does help. And then we're gonna pull that down into halfway through our highlight color. Now you can already see the huge difference between this one and this one. This one here is smooth and it looks very nice. 
but you're not losing that color. You still have the same original color. Whereas here, where we use the white Prisma color, it pretty much got rid of the color. And a lot of times, if I use the white, I've actually stopped using the white Prisma color because I find that I always have to come back and add that color back in, which is just another step for me. But some people do like this look. I don't really care for the fact that it gets rid of your colors and you have to come back again and do that extra step. And I really don't like the final waxy finish that it lays over the top. If you look here in the center, this looks more white than it does like the eggshell that I actually used. Now we're gonna use the Prisma Color Blender and I'm gonna start halfway and I am going to come down and blend all of these colors out. And I don't know if you could hear that on camera, but the Caran d'Ache blender is much softer. It does look quite a bit different where I did it with the Caran d'Ache and then did it with the Prismacolor. I usually prefer the Caran d'Ache blender, but it seems to perform for me better in coloring books on the smoother paper because the Prismacolor blender performed much better on this much toothier paper, and I never really even realized that before. But then you just want to brush all the crumbs off of there. But you can see after using the blender, that all of the colors have come together much, much better. All of the white of the paper is gone and you've created a much smoother transition between the darkest color, the mid-tone, and the lightest color. And then the final way that you could burnish your colors together is by using the lightest color of your color combination. So again, I'm gonna start with my lightest and I'm gonna go over the mid-tone and then into my darkest color. And you will see that it does change the color a little bit because it is creating a blend of the colors. And then before I'm coming down to do this end of our color combination, I did wipe it off because I didn't want to drag any of that darkest color into where I didn't want it. But you could see that this gets rid of all of the white of the paper, creates a beautiful transition. Okay, so here are our final results. We've got the white Prisma color. We have the color combo where we went over it with the blender. And then we have where we used our lightest color to burnish all the colors together. Now with the white Prisma color, you can see that you have a whole lot of extra white here in the center and it does actually put like a white film over your entire color combination after you burnish those colors together. And in a lot of cases, I will not do that. I used to use the white Prisma color to burnish and I have come away from that and stopped doing it because I prefer the look of either the blender or using the lightest color. Now use the lightest color in some cases depending upon the color combination that I'm using. And in a lot of cases, I won't even do a full burnish. I'll do a partial burnish because I find that even using the lightest color, I sometimes have to come back with my darkest color or even my mid-tone and lay down another layer, bringing some of that color back into it. And I don't wanna do that last step. It's just more work to me. So in this case, just looking at these, I really like the way this one looks because when you use the blender, you don't lose your colors. And all it is doing is just blending out all of your colors and bringing them together and doing that last and final step of burnishing. It's not going to lighten them up the same as if you were to use your lightest color or your white Prisma color. I hope that this video was helpful and it answered some of your questions. If you have any other questions about burnishing or anything else, please let me know in the comments below. I've really enjoyed doing these videos where I've answered your most asked questions. If you didn't see my previous video where I answered the question as to whether or not you should go lightest to darkest or darkest to lightest, I will link that one in the upper right hand corner. But I hope this answered your question about burnishing and whether or not you should burnish, in which instances you would burnish, and how you would burnish. And then of course you've got your three different ways that you can burnish your colors together. Everything you've seen in this video, I will have linked down in the description box below. I hope you all have a fabulous day. I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring, bye.